The NDP and Waterloo Region are getting ready for a provincial election. At a nomination meeting tonight, the Cambridge Riding Association selected a new candidate. She's Pam Wolfe, a teacher and mother of three. NDP leader Howard Hampton was also there to offer his support. Wolfe says education is her primary concern and she's looking forward to running in the next provincial election. Well, I'm excited about the next election and I think the... Uh Conservatives are definitely on the way down, and I'm very excited about uh, our results in the federal election in Windsor West. I think the uh, NDP victory in Windsor West was a message to both Conservatives and to Liberals, and the message is pretty clear. Get off the corporate agenda and start thinking about a people agenda. Uh, stop giving huge tax cuts to corporations and the well-off and start thinking about the schools, the hospitals, the environmental protection that all of us need. Wolf was the only declared candidate at tonight's meeting. University administrators are increasingly concerned about cheating. CKCO's Frank Lynn found out that while plagiarism is on the increase, so are efforts by universities to catch and punish or at least rehabilitate students who cheat. At the University of Waterloo last year, one graduate student was expelled and 13 students were suspended for one term. In total, there were 180 reported cases of plagiarism and cheating. That's an increase from the previous year, but still small numbers out of a student population of 20,000. This student says cheating usually involves new students. Uh, cheating and plagiarism uh, takes place usually during first term because students are a little bit more slack and they think whatever the work's easy, they don't have to do it. In the U.S., a Duke University survey of 2,100 students at 21 schools showed 75% admitted to some cheating, many using the Internet to submit the work of others. Duke now operates an academic integrity center to monitor and reduce cheating. The University of Guelph is now taking part in Duke's research project. Some university students think plagiarism is acceptable because of their high school experience. They come from a culture where group work is... Uh, encouraged so you and I may have put together now they're into an environment where individual uh, work is very important so you and I collaborate on an assignment and I just forget to put your name on it the internet has provided unlimited possibilities for cheating the idea of intellectual honesty is a very complicated one and one that is becoming uh, more difficult to um, explain in a world when we have access to information of all kinds and use it indiscriminately Laurier reports two students expelled last year. The school will begin using a computer program this fall to catch cheats. It will allow professors and instructors to check a student's essay for plagiarism. This student says plagiarizing assignments is simply a waste of time. Regardless of how well you do on your assignments, if you don't do well on the exam, it's not worth anything to you. So it's not worth the time to plagiarize. You might as well just do the assignments. It's for your own good. Frank Loon, CKCO News. A guilty plea from Richard Erickson. He's the Chatham-Kent man charged after shooting a crow for a report that was aired on CKCO News in 1999. The case turned into a legal three-ring circus involving the Ministry of Natural Resources, police, three justices of the peace, and constitutional arguments from lawyers. CKCO's Vicki Goff updates the story. Richard Erickson says he decided to cut his losses after a legal marathon of provincial court appearances one might only reasonably expect in a criminal investigation. It's been going on for almost two and a half years now, and it's costing me a lot of money and a lot of aggravation, so I just wanted it over and done with. Erickson pled guilty to discharging a firearm, as seen on this CKCO video, within eight meters of a roadway. Erickson says he shot the crow at the request of CKCO reporter Rick Walker, following an interview about Erickson's plan to rid Chatham-Kent of some nuisance crows. The shoulder of the road where I shot from is approximately 30 to 40 feet wide for garbage trucks. And we were over to the farthest point, so I figured I was uh, perfectly legal when I shot. But the Crown says the video speaks for itself. It's a very compelling bit of evidence when you, see, when you see it actually happening. So I think that's a large part why there was an, a, a plea here. CKCO News challenged the use of the video based on concerns over the role of the media. It's important that we obey the law, and we did. But it's also important to make the point that uh, we can't be seen as part of the law enforcement agencies. We're a separate organization. We're independent of law enforcement. During sentencing, the Justice of the Peace noted that Erickson is unemployed, but has a prior firearms conviction. 
So a fine was set at $750, somewhat less than the $1,000 fine the Crown sought. Vicki Goff, CKCO News, Chatham, Kent. Erickson says he's suing police for two and a half million dollars for an alleged invasion of privacy over a search for evidence at his home. He also said CKCO will be named as one of those being sued. About 750 blind and deaf students in Ontario may find themselves without classes again Friday morning because of a second strike in two months. Teachers at Ontario's schools for the blind and deaf have set a strike deadline of midnight. These are the same schools that were closed for nearly 35 school days during the recent strike by Ontario civil servants. That ended on May 2nd. The door is open for high school students in the People's Republic of China. The region of Waterloo's Catholic School Board has signed a co-op education agreement with its counterpart in the Chinese city of Weiching. The agreement could lead to dual diploma programs qualifying Chinese students for university studies here and in the United States. Officials here and in China will also investigate preparing English as a second language courses and short-term cultural visits. Some concerns tonight over the reconstruction of the Park Hill Bridge in Cambridge. As CKCO's Leslie Gordon tells us, that people there who like to kayak in the area are complaining about it. They say they've had enough of the construction and something needs to be done before a whitewater recreation area is ruined. These waters have become a popular challenge for adventurous kayakers. Dan Peters is one of them. I drive in from Caledonia uh, to enjoy the recreational component of this area. But lately, Peters has been unhappy with construction crews doing work on the bridge above the river. We saw thousands of, con thousands of pounds of concrete uh, freely falling into the river. Uh, we, we have concerns. Uh, I have concerns. I live downstream in Caledonia on the Grand River. And I know that in my community that would be unacceptable and I wouldn't stand for it. Peters is worried the debris will build up and ruin the Whitewater Rapids, but the engineer overseeing the project says there's nothing to worry about. Ernst Heinrich told CKCO News there is a, quote, debris containment system on site, and the contractor is, quote, making every effort to contain the debris. The bridge reconstruction is a regional project, and government officials say, quote, time to time there will be some spillover, and if that happens, crews will, quote, go in with a backhoe and collect it. But Peters intends to take his concerns to the Grand River Conservation Authority. This is a heritage river, and things like this shouldn't be going on. Leslie Gordon, CKCO News. The GRCA says up until now there have been no complaints about the situation. Authorities will continue to monitor that project. Star Wars fans are beaming, and so is a Kitchener company. As CKCO's David Emery reports, today's release of Episode 2 brings a new era of crisp cinema to the big screen. Excitement and anticipation, and for these folks, a first. A chance to see the inaugural digital presentation of Star Wars, technology developed by a Kitchener company. Our projectors were used on site to do the daily editing on location. They were used in the post-production process to do the uh, editing, and uh, they were actually used to launch the film in Hollywood last Sunday. The Galaxy in Waterloo is just one of four theaters in Canada with digital capabilities. With film, as good as it is, you get a flutter, you get a hair here and there. And if you're trying to lose yourself in the magic, any distraction's a distraction. Fans like the crisp, clear shots. The hair shots of the princess with the hair, I mean, it really, really stands out. So you'd notice the difference. As for the movie, no disappointment. Awesome. I'm just astounded at how much better it is than episode one, which is a good movie, but this one just blows it out of the water. It's amazing. It was fast moving, like really fast moving, and I, I enjoyed the storyline. I saw some of the trailers, and I thought, I'm not really into the love story aspect, but it worked. It was good. Good. A lot of romance, um, so that was a bit, you know, a bit to take in, um, but with the cheesy lines and all, but um, it was good. Uh, there's nothing like Yoda fighting. I thought it was ten. Two thumbs up. All this hype and this excitement is expected to continue for some time. Star Wars fans will be able to get their own copy of Episode 2 on DVD by this fall. But then they'll have to wait another three long years for the next release. That will be Star Wars Episode 3. David Emery, CKCO News, Waterloo.
still ahead on CKCO News. Rain will end overnight, but tomorrow we'll see a few sunny breaks. It will be very cool. Coming up in sports, game one between the Leafs and Hurricanes. Here unofficially are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by International Home Interiors. Fine furniture from around the world. Victoria Street North in Kitchener. You know, earlier today, I was really ready to believe that spring was here. It was beautiful. And then tonight, well, we're back to the same old, same old. And guess what? Today's forecast doesn't look any better, I hate to tell you. Here he is. You're right. It's going to be the same old, same old for the whole weekend. The cool air is moving in. The rain is moving out gradually. It's still raining a little bit around the lower lakes, but it's tapered off in the north, and it looks like we're in for a chilly weekend. 12 degrees right now in Toronto, 9 in kitchener Loo, but it's dropping off as you go north. Listowel, 7. Mount Forest, 4. Concarden, 5. Still 15 in St. Catharines. It's still cloudy with some light rain falling from Kitchener south to Lake Erie and east to Lake Ontario. And further north, we're looking at temperatures between about 4 and 7 around Georgian Bay. Some clearing across the northern half of the region, and the rain has stopped, at least for the time being, in the Georgian Bay District. Our high today, 18. We had a nice spring day, and that was it, because maybe that's all we're going to get for a while. 9 degrees are low, which is where we are right now, and about 12 millimeters of rainfall. The pressure is starting to rise now, humidity 88%. And the winds are switching around. They were from the south and southwest. Now they are northwest at around 25. 555 and 841 the sun times tomorrow. We have two things happening. First of all, a cold front coming in from the northwest. Secondly, a low pressure system moving through the lower lakes region along that front. And the low has created a lot of cloud and shower activity. And uh, the front, of course, coming in is bringing with it that cool Arctic air mass. And temperatures have dropped as low as 2 in Timmins, 4 in Gorbay, 3 in the Sioux, 4 in Wyatt and Mount Forest. Still holding mid-teens around Lake Ontario and along the Lake Erie region, but that cool air is moving in. And it's so cold that it's snowing in Timmins right now. We have rain from Windsor right through to Kingston along the lower lakes, and that rain is moving southeastward and will be gone by morning. We may see a bit of sunshine tomorrow, but that will not give us any warmth. It will be rather cool. A high-pressure ridge coming in from the prairies with some cold Arctic air and a series of lows along this front, which is moving southeastward, and this low going to the south of us tonight. And as it moves away, the rain will come to an end. But this one out here in the Midwest developing will give us more showers for the weekend, and the jet stream is going to be moving to the south of us. It was uh, to the north today with southwest winds, but a big upper trough moving in, and it will stay chilly right into the middle of next week. And so showers coming to an end gradually, followed by a partial clearing trend tonight. And then tomorrow, as we get deeper into the Arctic air mass, we are looking for a few sunny breaks, but cool northwesterly winds will continue. And we have 15 degrees in Montreal, 11 in Halifax tonight, down to 3 in St. John's, single-digit readings out to Winnipeg, and a little milder out through western Canada, 10 to 14. Once again, all the warm air is over the southern half of the states. Highs tomorrow between 9 and 12 with 11 for Kitchener-Waterloo. So four for the low tonight and a gradual clearing trend and then a mix of sun and cloud tomorrow, seven in the morning and a high of 11. The UV index will be moderate and it will stay cool Saturday, increasing cloud chance of late day showers, high of only 12. Look for 11 degrees Sunday with a few showers. Same thing for Monday and by Tuesday, sunny breaks and all the way up to 13 degrees for the high. CKCO Weather, brought to you by Barg Automotive. Six cities, ten locations, one website. Still ahead in sports, another gritty effort by the Leafs in game one against the Hurricanes. TSN Sports and Memorial Cup highlights on CKCO. Brought to you by Subway, seven great tasting sandwiches with just six grams of fat or less. We're back with sports. Greg Ross joins us now. And uh, the Maple Leafs were hard at it again tonight. 
Everybody's been saying they're emotionally strained and all the rest of it, but they yeah, are really right showing back. people what they're made of. Just 48 hours uh, rest from their last Game 7 against the Ottawa Senators, and uh, they were right back at it again tonight, and uh, they're doing their fans proud. I'll tell you that right now, Janine. Sure. It's hard to talk about the Leafs these days and not mention injuries. That's because the Leafs have so many of them. Following their series with the Ottawa Senators, which just ended Tuesday night, Toronto had seven regulars out of the lineup. Today, before the Leafs even stepped on the ice, for game one of their series with Carolina, another player was added to that list. Ty Domi had to sit out tonight's game with an ankle injury. He twisted his ankle in game seven with the Senators. Former Hurricane Gary Roberts is healthy and He's been the leader of this Leaf club. He's a big reason they've made it this far. Eric Cole has been outstanding in these playoffs for the Hurricanes. He's a big boy, and he can dish out some punishment. He hammers Thomas Coverley into the end boards in the first. Carolina opens the score, and Corey Cross tries to clear uh, the puck, but it's off Jeff O'Neill and into the net. That's O'Neill's third, and it was 1-0. The Leafs get it right back, though. Alexander McGillney has his first shot stopped, but he buries his own rebound. McGillney ties the game at one with his league-leading eighth of the postseason. Leafs looking for more. Corey Cross, the point shot, gets past Archer's Urbe, but just trickles wide of the net. That was a close one. Move ahead to the second now. Nathan Dempsey, the shot from the point. Jonas Hoagland gets a stick on it to tip it in. Urbe argues it was a high stick, but the replay proved it wasn't. Goal stands. It was 2-1 Leafs. Kane's looking for the equalizer in the third period. O'Neal spins. Fires the shot through traffic, but Curtis Joseph kicks the pad out to make a big save. Cujo stopped 31 shots tonight, and the Leafs hang on to take game one. Two to one is the final score, so the Leafs lead this series one game to nothing, and they'll look to take a two to nothing lead in Carolina before heading home on Sunday afternoon when they play game two of this series. Urbe with 22 saves in goal for the Hurricanes. The Leafs are showing some true grit in these playoffs. They just continue to win despite all of those injuries. Leafs head coach Pat Quinn was happy with the way his team played tonight, especially in light of all the club's injuries, but he knows Carolina is still going to be tough. Let's face it, that was a close game. They had a lot of good chances, and uh, we needed terrific goaltending. To and it was a one-goal game again. So um, we happened to win this one, and uh, we're, we'll look at game two the same way. Let's see if we can be good and do the little things that'll help us get a chance to win. And uh, and there's no guarantee, but it'll, if we do those things, we will have a, a chance. We worked hard and long to get here and uh, and look around. Let's see if we can do it with what we got and why can't we? And I think that's just an attitude you have to have when you're in team sports. The Dallas Stars have hired Dave Tippett to take over their head coaching duties for next season. Stars missed the playoffs this year for the first time in six years. Tippett comes over from the Los Angeles Kings where he served as an assistant coach for the last three years. He's given a three-year contract, although no financial terms have been disclosed. Tippett is an offensive-minded coach who was a big reason why the Kings had the best power play in the NHL this year. Played 11 seasons in the NHL with Hartford, Washington, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia. And a Memorial Cup scheduling change. And this is a pretty smart move by the organizers of the Mem Cup. They have decided to change game number two from a 4 o'clock start on Sunday to a 1 o'clock start. Now, the reason for that is because this game would have gone head-to-head -head with the Leafs-Hurricanes game, and now it won't because of that change. The change was made to accommodate the fans who also want to watch the Leafs-Carolina game. The Toronto Blue Jays played the rubber match of a three-game series with the Seattle Mariners tonight at the Skydome. The Jays with a chance to win their second straight series. They dropped seven in a row before this. Luke Prokopek on the hill for the Jays, facing a tough Seattle club with nine wins in their last 12 games. But a great start for the Blue Jay hurler. He K's Mike Cameron in the first, and he blows one by Ichiro Suzuki to end the second. The scoreless until the fourth. That's when the M's break this one wide open. Carlos Guillen with a blast deep to right center, and it's over the wall for a two-run shot. Guillen's fifth. It was two zips, still in the fourth. Mark McLemore strokes this pitch into the right field bullpen for a three-run bomb. That's McLemore's fourth dinger. Shadow was up 5-0 five, five, after four. Move ahead to the seventh. Base is loaded for Mike Cameron when he gets a hold of this Pete Walker offering, and it's out of the yard for a grand slam home run, the third of Cameron's career. That made it 11-2 M. Seattle scored eight runs in the seventh, and they go on to pound the Jays in the finale of this three-game series. 15-2 was the final score, so the Mariners take two of three from the Blue Jays in this series. Toronto will host Oakland uh, starting tomorrow in a weekend set.
Now, the Tigers were supposed to finish off their series with the Anaheim Angels tonight at Comerica Park, but the weatherman had other ideas, not Dave McDonald, of course. Heavy rain forced them to postpone this game. They'll have to make it up later in the season. So once again, the Tigers and the Anaheim Angels postponed due to rain. Elsewhere in the American League today, the New York Yankees with a big win over the Tampa Bay D-Rays, 14 to nothing, the final in this one. Oakland blanked Boston by a final of five to nothing. Baltimore in Cleveland, and this one also postponed because of the nasty weather. The Chicago White Sox beat Texas four to nothing, and it was Minnesota with a 14 nothing victory over Kansas City in the National League. The Montreal Expos taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. This game is in the fifth inning of play, and the Expos have a two to one lead. Time now to take a quick break, but coming up, Lewis and Tyson are just a few weeks away from their title bout in Memphis, and Lewis says he can't wait. Welcome back. The Paris Grand Golf Course held a media day today to introduce its new layout. The newly constructed course was designed by Jed Azinger, brother of PGA Tour veteran Paul Azinger. Jed says the new course offers golfers a lot of variety. It's a challenge, but it's still a whole lot of fun for golfers. Well, there's not a boring hole on the golf course. Um, it's, uh, it's a stretch from the back tees. It's challenging for probably the best players in the world. Uh, yet you can move up to the forward tees and have just an enjoyable day of golf. He's uh, rebuilt the entire golf course, um, added uh, quite a bit of length. Uh, got 7,000 yards in total, um, bent grass, tee to green, um, four sets of tee decks. Uh, plays anywhere from 5,000 from the front deck to uh, 7,000 from the back. And at the, after one round of the PGA Colonial in Fort Worth, Texas, Bob Estes leads the way at five under. Cambridge native Ian Leggett was even on the day. And Brights Grove's Mike Weir was plus one. Canada's Don Coe Jones is tied for third at the LPGA stop in South Carolina. And the heavyweight championship belt between Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson is just over three weeks away. And Tyson and Lewis will meet in the ring June 8th in Memphis, Tennessee for the IBF and WBC championship belts, which Lewis currently holds. Reports from Mike Tyson's camp says he is in the best shape he's been in in years and he's really taking his training seriously for this fight. But Lewis says he's not worried because in his mind he is simply a superior boxer to Tyson. Mike Tyson won't be successful. You know, if you look at his last two fights, you know, or three fights, he's always saying, well, he needs a couple fights to get ready for me. So even him, he doesn't feel mentally uh, uh, prepared for this fight in the sense of believing that he can he can beat me or that he's ready to believe uh to beat me he has to remember that i'm the best you know tyson's never seen a boxer like lennox lewis it's going to be a shock for him when he when he steps in the ring with me and finally tonight with the memorial cup set to begin in guelph saturday afternoon we want to know who you think will win the chl championship you can click on our website and cast your vote you can cast your vote for either the guelph storm erie otters victoria bill tigers or the kootenai ice And that'll do it for sports. We're back to wrap things up right after this timeout. Janine, I don't think a lot of people thought the Leafs had it in them to win this game tonight. Not a lot of rest. They were banged up. Eight regulars out of the lineup for this game, but still they managed to, to pull this one out. A gritty effort out there, a 2-1 to one victory for the Leafs. Now and, they uh, got that psychological edge of having oh. won the first game of the series. And they also have home ice advantage now, I guess you could say. And, I mean, yeah, they have a chance to go home at least with the split, but with a 2 to nothing lead in this series if they can win on Sunday as well. So, sure. I mean, this is a big boost for the Leafs in this series. And... Uh, they could be headed for the Stanley Cup if all goes well. So Greg's feeling very hopeful. <laughs> they do look good, though. Thanks a lot, Greg. Yeah, he's more hopeful than I am mm. about the weather because it's going to be a cool, cool weekend. Uh, at least tomorrow, though, will be dry with a few sunny breaks. You know, Dave, I heard that this Victoria Day weekend could be the coldest on record. Do you care to throw your hat in the ring on that one? I'll agree with that. Oh, no, I was afraid you'd say that. That's all our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.